Welcome everyone to a new game on the channel. As you can see on your screen, we're going to be taking a look at another brick in the mall. And yes, it's going to be very difficult for me to say that name properly and not go Pink Floyd on you with some music references. So, but I'll give it my best shot and hopefully we'll get through this together. Now this game, as the title might imply, is a tycoon type game focusing on consumerism. And specifically, you're going to be building different types of stores, selling different types of products, hiring and firing workers, setting the times where your stores are going to open and close, and so forth. So you're going to have uh, a lot of control. Now, this game is in early access, and we're doing this video today because early access just began today, a little bit earlier in the day. So I've not had much time in the game. But one of the fun things I get to do with this channel is we all get to learn together. You guys uh, see the mistakes I make in the game, and you can correct me in the comment section, and then hopefully I'll get better as we go along. So we start here on our menu screen, and so we've got your basic new and load game options as well as credits, and then exit the game. Let's take a brief look at the options. As you might expect from this type of a game, the graphics options are very minimal. You choose your monitor, whether you want full screen or windowed, and then the resolutions you want to, you want to play at. You've got V-Sync, turn that on or off. Map sampling, which is three options there. And then finally, shadows, on or off. A few options under sound. Uh, the sound is mainly your background sound. You'll have a uh, sound of general noise from that people would make as they rummage around, and also cars as they enter and leave. Music, I actually did not hear any music whatsoever when I started up the game, but I've turned that down to zero just in case because I don't want it interrupting our gameplay and taking over uh, the video. Under game options, we've got one, and that is max pathfinding threads. Uh, and by default, it's set all the way down here to two, but I've run it up to the maximum. And so far, I've not seen any stuttering, but as the, uh, the tool tip here would indicate, if we start to see any of those, then I'll turn that down. Uh, time lapse, I'm actually not sure what that does, but based off of the options here, that looks like screenshots uh, in some fashion, but hopefully we'll figure that out as we go as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start a new game. You've got various options here with or without the tutorial. For our first video, we're going to go ahead and leave the tutorial on. How much starting money do you want? 50, 200, or unlimited? I'm going to go ahead and use the standard option there. Normal research or unlocked. I am very tempted to unlock all the research uh, because the research seemed to go pretty slow when I was playing briefly just uh, a little while ago, but I'm going to resist the urge. Now, one thing I am going to do is change our builders to fast because, quite frankly, I'm not interested in waiting for our builders to get a bunch of stuff done. That may not be such a huge issue as we move throughout the game, but at the very beginning, it will be. So I'm going to turn that to fast. Otherwise, we're going to leave everything as default. And here we go. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long to get going in the game world. Now, we've got several things going on here in the game world, and we're going to go ahead and pause the time. The tutorial is starting up. We've got several options around the screen. Now, the if we look at our game map here, We've got, as this tutorial is trying to tell us, that we've inherited this massive plot of land, and we cannot use it for residential. We cannot use it for industrial. Commercial is our only option, okay? But before we get into that, you can see we've got some outlets here. We've got one that we'll start with here, and that's where our buildings will start, and we've got three others around the map, okay? Let's start with the options that we see around the screen first. Our objectives are going to be toward the bottom of the screen, generally toward the bottom right-hand portion of the screen. Hopefully our uh, Knee Pit Gaming logo won't cover up any or very many of those. If it is, then we'll move it around maybe somewhere else. Okay, and then across the top, starting with the top left, you will see the number of customers that we have on site. And this will give us an idea for various things like how many cashiers we might need, how much parking we might need, that kind of thing. Okay, parking usage, there you go. How many? This will uh, default to how many parking stalls we have and then uh, give us an idea of how many we're going to need. And, of course, this will be based on many things, including our pricing, how big the store is, and so forth. So this will be something we want to keep an eye on. 
Our sales per day, how many items are we selling uh, per day? And again, this will be affected by various things such as parking, how many customers we can get in and out of the store at a time uh, with our sales clerks and cashiers and uh, stocking and so forth. So again, another useful item. Of course, the end all be all here is the profit. We'll be looking to maximize our profit. And uh, this was an area where we can quickly see how we're doing each day. We'll have various costs, maintenance, everything we do and build has maintenance associated with it. Salaries will be related to how many people we hire and what salaries we choose to pay them. Debt, we'll have an opportunity later on in the game to take out some loans, but not immediately. Uh, before they let you get into debt, they uh, force you to have net profit positive days, a certain number in, in a row before you can worry about taking out loans. Gross profit, of course, will be um, pretty self-explanatory. And then finally, your net profit, which is after you take all of your uh, income and your outflowing money and you'll net it out and hopefully you'll be making money at the end of the day. Uh, debt screen, which we won't use for a little while. And then our starting cash, which we got to determine in the main menu. Now, our objectives, which we can see down here at the bottom as well. Right now we have one, and that is simply open a business. And for that, the game is going to give us $10,000. Okay, with that in mind, let's go ahead and move forward. Again, still paused because there's really nothing we can do in the game just yet. But we'll get to that momentarily. Now, looking around, the, the basic game controls are pretty simple. W, A, S, and D to move around the game world. And we can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. So pretty simple there. Let's move on. Our, so we're going to get go ahead and get started. Now, before we do that, we've got a few more options to look at in the top right hand portion of the screen. We can look at various statistics and some of which we can see up at the top left hand corner of the screen we've already taken a look at. But several things that we'll want to look at uh, going forward, one of which is satisfaction of our customers. OK, we can look at those statistics. We can look at our finances. Again, we saw up in the top left hand corner of the screen where we can get some of this information very quickly. But this will give us access to more days than just the current day. Research, uh, these are in hours, so it's going to take a while for most of these things to happen. So it's going to be quite a while before we're able to uh, work our way through these. Now, the road networks, uh, that's using the other connections within the game. So as we get those unlocked, we'll be able to, to use those. OK, so we've got statistics. We finally have research and then needs. This will tell us over here to the right hand side, if you see fast food, there is a demand for 200 per day right now. And then this will give us an idea as all of this relates. And that will help us determine what type of a store we want to open up. At the very beginning, because of our limited research, we're going to have very limited access to different products. But as the game goes on, we'll expand that list and we'll be able to see the amount per day that's in demand and we can determine what we want to offer accordingly. OK, then we've got our finance tab. Again, you can see the four tabs across the top here. They're giving you an option here to go straight to one of those without having to work your way through the menu. Then we have an option here, go back to basically this, the main menu, save our game, load a different game, and so forth. And then here we've got our standard time issues. We've got, we're paused, we can go standard time, and then fast forward accordingly. Okay, if we look at our other uh, menu options, one thing that is a little bit different about the game that I've seen so far is Generally, whenever I want to deselect an item, uh, such as, you know, I'm looking at various things I want to build. And then if I want to deselect something, normally I would press either escape or right click or something like that. That doesn't seem to work in this game to this point. Again, remember, we are early access, so a lot of changes to happen over time. But you in general, I found that the best way to do it is to simply you can see the hotkey is E or you can simply choose the select button here at the top. Now, so other than select, which will give us an option to select various things within the world once we've built them, you've got build and we've got different options within here. We'll start out building some road work, 
foundations for our building, which is basically setting up the dimensions for our building. We can remove those things. We can set up walls, which will delineate uh, and, and separate our store area from our storage area and later on bathrooms and so forth. Then we've got various objects, which would be uh, coolers, shelves, tables, countertops, anything like that will be under object, objects. Then we can remove various walls and objects. And then finally, we got different floor tiles that we can use for our buildings. A sign uh, we'll look at as we go forward through the tutorial as well, but we can assign various areas as storage, as stores, and then you can see some things unlocked here, fast food restaurants, and so on. Okay, and then finally, manage. This is where we're going to see all of the, and they call them zones, which is where we saw those under assign. You're going to have various zones. Right now we have a maintenance center, which is the one building that you currently see other than some parking spots. Okay, so our maintenance center will be responsible for holding our builders and our janitors. So here we'll have an option. We start out with three builders. I'm not really sure we need that many. So we're probably going to get rid of at least one and probably two of those pretty quickly. So you've got an option to hire or fire builders. You've got an option to hire or fire janitors, which will keep our buildings clean. So part of the fun of this game is going to be as we figure out how many of each of these things do we need? How many builders do we need? And so that we can still remain profitable, how many janitors do we need per building? Uh, so We'll take a look at this more in depth as we move along, but let's take a quick look under staff. You can see we've got three builders, as I mentioned, but notice down here that we've got starting times. So you've got zero to 24 hours, so a full day down here at the bottom. And you can see that, I'm not sure why they've chosen to use these numbers, but basically what this is telling you is as we change the starting hours for our various builders, it tells us how many builders are on duty for that particular section of time. Okay, so starting time here is 7 o'clock for our first builder, and then 15, so again, military time here. So you come, your next builder comes in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and then finally you have another one comes in at 11 o'clock p.m. So this works out so that we have a builder always around so that any building projects we have at any time during the day as the clock runs, we'll always have a builder on staff. Okay, so the math works out pretty evenly there, 24 hours in a day, eight hour shifts, so we need three builders to cover that. And you'll see the same thing uh, as we get into other workers as well. Okay, the same thing would apply to janitors and so on. So down here at the bottom, it gives you an, a quick glance at how many builders or other workers are on staff at a particular time. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and with that in mind, Let's go ahead and exit out. I almost hit escape, but instead I'll hit select to deselect the option. So our short tutorial is ready. Let's take off. All right, so the first thing it wants us to do is build foundation. So we're ready to set up our first building. And as you can see, it's already predetermined the size for us. And if we follow along, it says click on the build menu and under foundations, we're ready to go. So basically we're going to cliff, let, left click and drag. There we go. So right now we're under pause, so our builders aren't doing anything. We have, again, one on uh, staff at all times during the day and night. So we're gonna go ahead and let this go at regular time. And, and I'll give you a quick idea of how long it takes for these to build. Remember, in the options, we did choose the fast builder rather than the normal size. So that this will give you an idea of how long it will take. Okay, so it says right here, we don't need to wait for them. We can go ahead and speed things up with the fast forward button. But before I did that, I wanted to give you guys an idea of how long it takes them at normal speed. So let's go ahead and let them get completed with that. Okay, so now we have a completely enclosed building. It says we're ready to move into placing a couple of doors. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started there. We'll go back under build. And it says we need to go under objects. And now we've got a couple of doors to place. We're gonna use the double door and you can see how much each item costs. Double door and we'll drop it in right here. And then on the left side, we need a staff door. 
Okay. This is where our staff can enter and exit. Now we're going to separate out our store from our storage. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, we need to be under build. We're going to come back to walls and we're going to click and drag to create our walls as well. So our builder is going to head back in, then they're going to have to come back out. So now we're going to need to build another staff door so that our staff can get between our storage and our store area. Okay, so we're going to go back into objects and staff door. And you can see it doesn't quite line up exactly, but we're going to go ahead and place our staff door there. Okay, now we're ready to assign some areas. Okay, we're going to need to assign storage and basically storefront areas. So let's go under assign and assign storage. And again, click and drag the outline of the area. Now we've assigned our first storage area. Now we need to assign this area as storefront. So we click on store and click and drag. And now our area is assigned. So now we have clearly delineated areas for where we're going to be selling items and where we're going to be storing items. Okay, next up, we're going to need to go back into build and we're going to need to build some shelving. So at first it's telling us just drop any type of shelf you want to here and then it wants us to sell some food on the remaining area. So we're going to go ahead and put our food in first. You can see it's the food shelving is two by one, two wide by one block tall. So we're going to place several of these around here and our builder is going to come in and start placing those. We're going to put some basic normal shelving up here at the top of the screen. Now, one thing that I did, not, uh, did notice in the uh, notes for the release here is that the devs noted or the devs noted that you need to make sure that the area underneath a shelf is left open because that's where you're going to use that area to stock items and also where the customers will purchase items from. So they're going to get items off your shelf, but you need to have the area, the blocks underneath the shelving open. So we're going to keep that in mind. Now with that out of the way, we need somewhere for them to check out. So we're going to scroll down through and sometimes these descriptions get in the way. Okay, so checkout counter. We need to put a couple of these in. You can see they line up perfectly with our tutorial boxes. And it also, you can see that it tells you with the uh, the highlighted boxes exactly where your customers are going to check out from. So we're going to put one there and then a second down below it. Okay, with that out of the way, we'll click on select to get everything off of our screen as far as building goes. And we're going to move on to what products we're going to sell. Well, and the way you do that is you can see on the screen it says right click to select a product. All right, so let's go ahead and start with some items here. And the biggest thing it wants us to do is just go ahead and start uh, and use different items. Okay, so we're going to do that. What do we want to start with? Well, on this one, I'll go ahead and do diapers. We're going to go with health and beauty here. Toilet paper and pads and tampons. So unique choices to get us started. But those are the items that right now we have available to us uh, in our store. Remember, we're going to be able to unlock a lot more later on um, as we get into our research. So let's take a look at what we did. First and foremost, we got our shelf over here and we're going to be putting diapers on it. Again, we don't have any workers right now, so none of this is really happening for us. So with that in mind, I'm going to pause for a moment. So. Anytime we want, we can click through our shelves. Left clicking on them shows what item is on display here, how full we are from zero to 100%, and then if there's any expiration of the product. And then probably most importantly is our margin. We can choose to use auto margin, which would be, looks like 220%, or we can do manually. And we can choose all the way down to basically zero up through 200. For now, we're going to leave these on manual, but again, it tells you at a certain margin, here's your cost, here's how much you're selling it for, and here's your potential profit, as well as how much it's costing us each day to maintain these shelves. 
So everything has a cost, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Let's move on to these shelves. These are food shelves. So let's right click and see what kind of food options we have. Beverages, let's go ahead and put beverages here. We'll put soda on the first one, bottled water in the next one. And remember, we're right clicking here to take care of this. And finally, juices on that one. Okay, on our second row of three shelves, we're gonna put some food. And now what do we wanna put? Well, this is looks like basically a convenience store type of a setup. So I wanna put some bread here, some snacks there, and let's see, what else do we want? Um, how about some candy? We'll go ahead. And remember, we can change these anytime we want, so we're not locked in. All right, for now, it wants us to build a loading zone here. And the reason why we need a loading zone is because we need somewhere for new product to come in. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and what do we need? Well, if we look at the tutorial, it says under build, we want road work. Okay, so we have an option to build road, customer parking, which we already have a little bit of up front. And then we need a loading zone. So let's go ahead and click there and put our loading zone here. Our builder will come out and work on that. Okay, now let's see what it wants us to do next. Okay, so we need, it says where it's time to hire some workers. So let's go ahead and pause again. So now we come under the manage tab. Okay, we have three options here. We can manage any of these three. We've already taken a look at our zone for the maintenance center. This is where we would hire our builders and janitors, but we're not looking for that right now. We need some employees for our store. So let's go ahead and assign storage so that we can connect where the items from our store are gonna be stored. So let's assign this. Okay, so up at the top, in order to do that, it says go into manage, which we are, and select the store from the list, which we did here. Okay, now click on the zone tab which we're under now, and then assign storage. Okay, so we've got that taken care of. So we are going to assign this storage. Okay, and it tells us, okay, now it knows where we're storing the items. This is so our, our clerk will know where to come and get the items that he's gonna put on the shelf. Okay, so now we're ready to hire a cashier and stock clerk. So let's first hire a cashier, and now it brings us to the available options here and it also tells us that later on in the game as we unload or uh, unlock new road accesses then we'll have more job applicants to choose from right now we only have the one road that connects us to our land so we've only got three options okay and who do we choose well let's take a look we've got various different things to look at here we're hiring a cashier so Theoretically, we want to choose the person with the highest skill in cashier, which would be this person. She is also fast and has a lot of patience. Now, all of these may not necessarily have a whole lot to do with at the beginning because it is early access. But for now, looks like we have good speed, good patience, and the highest rating. We're going to hire her. Okay, when do we want her to get here? Well, you can see that if we come back over here, we're open from nine to five and no i'm not going to sing the song for those of you who might be a little bit older and can remember that movie and song from dolly parton we're not going to go there so right now she's coming in right at opening actually i want to change this a little bit i want to change opening and let's go from let's go from eight there we go let's go from eight to four so we're going to have eight to four. So this will basically have her time line up with the opening time of the store. But you see there's a little bit bleed over into when the store closes. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that and see how that lines up. Now, she comes in when the store opens and leaves when the store closes. Okay, so this is very basic. We'll definitely want to extend our opening and closing times um, as profit dictates and our customers dictate, but for now, that's good. So now we need a stock clerk. Let's take a look and see, looks like here, this is our best option there, speed and patience. Okay, I like it. So let's go ahead and hire Oscar to be our 
stock clerk. Okay, so now we've opened up our first business and it's about time to have some customers come in. Okay, and then it's letting us know here that the default store opening hours are unambitious, which is definitely true. So we're gonna want to be able to open earlier and close later, and that'll be done under research. And of course, we'll need to hire more people to take care of things. Uh, it's also letting us know that, you know, we don't have very many products to offer, as you can see from our limited options when we were stocking our shelves, but we'll be able to research additional options and then letting us know that, of course, we'll want to eventually move out and connect to other, uh, in other lines of incoming traffic and build much, much more than we have going here. So now we're done with the tutorial. Let's go ahead and open things up and we're on our own now. So we've got what we got. Our store is open. You can see here, deliveries we've selected here and excellent. So now our items are being delivered into this area, which we stipulated. And you can see here, the lighting is off. That's because our store is not open right now. If we go back under manage, we can see that our store under zone is open from eight through 17. We're past that. So the store is closed right now. And our staff are here from eight. Let's see, we need to change. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then salary. Now, again, all of this will be based on sort of trial and error, figuring out what salary we need to pay uh, and give us the ability to, at the end of the day, make money because we're going to need to make money if we're going to keep the doors open. Right now, we have 178000 left, but of course, that's not going to last very long. Uh, for now, to finish up this video, we're going to go ahead and turn this auto salary off and manually change this to the minimum of $10 per hour to get started. Now, you can see, if you notice, under our cashier, her satisfaction goes down and up based on the amount we're paying. And of course, you know, who wouldn't want to get your satisfaction bar maxed out by getting more money per hour? But for right now, at the beginning, we're going to go ahead and stick with the minimum of 10, and then we'll see how that goes as we move forward. The big thing is we don't want the satisfaction to go down too much because if it goes down too much, our workers will actually quit. All right, we're about to have our first store opening as our time, remember we're open from eight o'clock through 17 or five o'clock in the afternoon. And so we got, we wanted to make sure that our times for our employees matching up with the times that were open. Everything seems to be good. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we've got for our very first day. While I'm thinking about it, remember, we're gonna want to, in, in the future, hire some additional people. Right now, the first thing I'm gonna do, I think, is get rid of a few of these builders, but again, we'll take care of that at another time. All right, there we go. Our clerk, as we're on fast forward here, is stocking all of our shelves. Customers are coming in. Let's go ahead and slow things down for just a moment. Customers are coming in. You see they go to the shelves. They pick these up. Remember, they, they go to the bottom of the shelf that they want to purchase from. Same thing when we're stocking. Keep these bottom areas open and now our clerk or cashier is going to check these folks out at differing speeds depending on her uh, skills and we'll see how things go the biggest thing we don't want right now is we don't want customers to miss out because there's too long of a line or there's nothing on the shelves you can see right now we're not in any danger of losing everything on our shelves mostly because we just opened and it looks like one problem that we're having right now that they're letting us know at the very bottom of the screen about is we don't have enough parking. So we're missing the possibility of some sales because we simply don't have enough parking. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and get started by laying down some more road 
and we're going to need employee parking. We're going to need a place for trash pickup. We're going to need more uh, customer parking and so forth. So we've got a lot to do, but we'll take care of that in our second Let's Play video of another brick in the mall.